Taxation on wealth, for example, mm -hmm. the AT on private schools. In terms of being worried, let's wait and see. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much for coming along today. And yes, OK, so I suppose because of the polls, the outcome of the recent UK election wasn't entirely unexpected, was it? Um, but today, look, let's look at that result from the perspective, as I just said, of the wealthier individuals. Um, do you think they should be worried? Um, thanks, Jenna. Um, in terms of being worried or not, I think um, let's wait and see. Mm -hmm. um, we're not going to have a budget um, or, or an autumn statement immediately. Um, that's likely to be in the autumn, uh, later this year. Um, Labour have obviously set out in quite a lot of detail in their manifesto and the costings um, what to expect in yeah. terms of revenue raising. Mm -hmm. um, so everyone can see what's in there. Uh, I think, I suppose, some of the unanswered questions are, you know, the, the kind of gaps that have been identified, what, what more might they do and also on what timelines? Yeah, because there's been some language that's been sort of probably purposefully ambiguous, yeah. Um, so... The next budget, you mentioned autumn as a timeline, so explain the thinking behind that. So the Labour Party are going to involve the OBR and they do a review, a review which takes about um, 10 weeks or so. Yeah. Um, so Parliament's going to break up for recess at the end of July, mm -hmm. and MPs will go away in August and then they'll come back in September, there'll be conference season um, and then so we can expect a, a budget, uh, a fiscal event in October. Mm -hmm. um, that, that's what many commentators expect. Um, and Rachel Reeves then at that point will set out um, what revenue raises and what spending uh, the Labour government expects to do. And there'll also be a comprehensive spending review as well, because mm -hmm. there was one three years ago um, in 2021 under Rishi Sunak and Labour will now have the opportunity to set out uh, their spending plans for the next three years. OK, now, obviously, there's always so much speculation from the newspapers, from commentators. What's your sort of personal view in terms of Labour's approach with wealthier individuals? Obviously, I... I know Starmer has purposefully put a lot of clear blue water between him and the last, uh, uh, but between Jeremy Corbyn, for instance. But what, what do you think? And also, before the election, Patrick Diamond, who worked for Tony Blair and Gordon Brown, did say that they'd probably have to impose higher taxes on wealth if they won. But Starmer said the number one mission was wealth creation. So slightly different language there. What do you think? I think one of the key things that Rachel Reeves and Keir Starmer uh, have been trying to do is to reassure businesses, to court businesses. Um, they've also made growth um, central to their agenda. And already we've seen uh, in the first week that they've done things like unblocking onshore wind and they've uh, tried to turbocharge house um, building. House building, exactly. Yeah. So there are things there in terms of the growth agenda, which, um, you know, people can see uh, and can be energised by. In terms of taxation on wealth, obviously a few things have been set out already, for example, mm -hmm. the AT on private schools yes. um, and, and stuff to do with the, the, the non-DOM status. I think the, the key there is just let's wait and see um, what, what Labour come, uh, come out and say uh, in, in the autumn. There's yeah. quite a lot of political uncertainty at the moment around the world. I mean, you look at France, you look at the United States as well. Gosh, yes. <laughs> so having, Labour having quite a big majority, about, I think it's 181 uh, majority, working majority in Parliament, there is an element of stability mm. uh, in terms of the, the new Labour government. So mm. that is something to be mindful of when, when thinking about your own um, personal circumstances. And also, I suppose, no matter what the uh, result is, just having a new government is more, as you say, stable than constantly knowing that an election is coming up, when's that going to be, and all of that sort of turbulence. So obviously we had it a little bit earlier than expected. OK, so to go to you now, Lars, because we've got an accountant yeah. on the sofa. So let's ask you about the tax implications. There has been a lot, as I said, in the press, but often that can be quite alarmist, can't it? It can be quite headline grabbing. And I think we want to be really sort of measured here. So what are you hearing? So in terms of inheritance tax, you're looking at, um, I don't think they're going to make any changes to the rates the, the allowance, the 325,000 inheritance tax allowance. Mm -hmm. I think what they will do is they will tighten up the offshore trusts to um, help with the anti-avoidance of moving your wealth across into offshore trusts to avoid inheritance tax. Yeah. Also think on stamp duty for non-DOMs, they're going to increase stamp duty by between 2 and 3%, even as much as 4% additional stamp duty for those people buying properties in, in the UK who are non-DOM status. So, OK, let's go to non-DOM status. Um, in your opinion, Lars, do you think, you know, because again, I've seen some 
fairly dramatic headlines. And, you know, again, I kind of know how the press work. And I think there's always probably some truth in there. And then maybe there's some exaggeration as well. So would you say that everybody with money will now be moving abroad or moving their money overseas? I don't. There, there's going to be an element of that yeah. that's going to happen. Yeah. Non-DOM status has been a bit of a difficult scenario in the tax profession for a number of years with the rules changing every five minutes. So it's very complicated and some of the rules around resident status have been quite quite complex. Yeah. I don't think you're going to see a mass exodus of, of people leaving the country no. um, because of the tax regime because they all still like their children to go to our schools and at our universities so there's always they're all going to have these ties. I don't see there being a max mass exodus it mm. might be just slightly more expensive for them in the long run. Yeah and I guess also there's that sort of uh, truth that they've got assets here, they've got homes here, they've got lives yeah. here. So, you know, it would be a big decision to totally up, up stick. So we'll have to see um, how that one pans out. Um, OK, so if the government do make these changes, which we think they absolutely will, and the non-DOM status, you're saying that could happen as early as when the budget comes in. Uh, yeah, exactly. So mm. th there'll be a there'll be a finance bill, mm. um, which will be a finance act. Um, that, that's legislation which which Parliament has to pass. And some some changes can happen immediately, you know, yeah. at, at, yeah. at sort of midnight on the night of the budget. So you know, let's wait and see what's in it. There will be probably some briefings beforehand about what Labour intend to put in that budget. Again, they're not going to want to spook the markets. So yes. I think people will get a bit of you know, a bit of foresight in terms of what's going to be in there. And we've all, we already know the things that uh, are in the manifesto. I think the big question is what's not in the manifesto yeah. that, they're, that they might end but up with. Where like, the language has been very careful. Exactly. Yeah. That, that sort of Ming vase strategy that the Labour Party have been uh, yeah. adhering to throughout the election campaign. Yeah. They've put the vase down now. Yeah, well, let's hope, well, it, doesn't, let's hope it doesn't shatter. But yeah. I mean... Uh, I, I, I think that's going to be the interesting thing that we see across the across the summer. Uh, yeah. We've already seen Rachel Reeves come out and say that the economic circumstances that she's inherited are worse than they expected. So that's laying a little bit of a political framing for, for some taxes to allow in, some, yeah, in, in in the autumn. But let's wait and see. Okay. I'd like I'd like to think that they did it all in the fifth of April rather than immediately because it does cause problems for HMRC and them getting the systems up in place. Sure. So we always like to see when the they, accountants trying when to catch they, up when they make a change, not, not just from an accountant's perspective, but yeah. when they made the change to the national insurance. All the payroll software companies were scrambling around trying to sort this out really quickly because it was going to come into place in a couple of months. I'd like yeah. to think that they used the the tax year basis period for being able to make those changes. That's a very good point. And just, I just wanted to quickly alight on, it's very interesting what you say as well, because we have entered this culture now where almost they make announcements and you know what they're going to be. Mm. And there's, but there was a lot of leaking, right? So we'll see whether that stays or whether when they make an announcement, it's actually an announcement. Yeah, I Sometimes mean, you find yourself discussing yeah. the things that are going to be announced before they've happened. Yeah. I mean, in, in politics, there's something called kite flying, where things do get briefed out to see how the public yeah. react to these things uh, yeah. and whether their politicians agree as well. So, I mean, in the week up to the budget, there will be lots of briefings about what's going to be in it so that the markets aren't spooked. They, they won't want a repeat of what happened with Liz Truss. Um, they won't want any la nasty surprises. They want yeah. to keep it very calm and very mm -hmm. steady. And um, I think that's what we'll see. Also, another quick point is that they're only likely to be doing one fiscal event. They've already announced that. So it'll be an autumn budget and they'll right. try and keep to that annual uh, fiscal event. Okay, excellent. Well, look, thank you so much for joining me here in the studio today. It was really, really interesting. Thank you very much to both of you.